I'm Bruce LaBruce. I'm here at the Berlin Alley with my new film, Pierrot Lunaire. Uh, it's an adaptation of a, a stage uh, version of Arnold Schoenberg's Pierrot Lunaire that I did in, in Berlin several years ago. Um, we just had our big uh, world premiere at the Delphi Theatre yesterday, which was uh, very crowded and enthusiastic and uh, I'm happy to be uh, showing the world my new work. Also, Ruth, auf diesen Tönen ein Vernichtungssücht gereizt. Wilder Lust, Akkorde stören, der Verzweiflung Eis getraut. Wie ein blasser Tropfen Blut färbt die Lippen Eis und jauchzend, süß und schmachtend, melancholisch düstre Walze, kommst mir nicht mehr aus den Sinnen, haftest mir an den Gedanken wie ein blasser Tropfen Blut. Idee ist based on the music by Schönberg. Yes, it, it, I mean, uh, yeah, we can, we can get into it. <laughs> I, I actually think we are running, <laughs> so... <laughs> I didn't know we were running. Okay, um, so you can edit, or...? <laughs> yeah, we can cut. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, uh, uh, an actress that I worked with quite often in Berlin, Susanna Sachsen, uh, who's been in three of my films, she approached me uh, with a conductor, Premil uh, Petrovic, uh, who's from Belgrade, to direct a, a, an adaptation of Schoenberg's uh, Pierre Lunaire. And uh, I really didn't know much about Schoenberg and I'd never really uh, directed uh, anyone else's work, so I was intrigued and uh, I, uh, did some research and then came up with a, a kind of a story that for me uh, really um, really uh, captured the essence of, of uh, the mood of Schoenberg. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Which you also have in the movie. I mean, you have the music most of the time in the movie as the background music. Yeah, you have Susanna actually uh, uh, recorded uh, the whole, the whole um, composition of Pierre Lunaire um, and she performed it on stage and uh, so I use uh, footage from the from um, the stage performances and then I shot additional uh, material on location in Berlin um, and combined it with the stage footage to make a kind of a, a experimental film. So the way was rather that you had the footage of the theatre play to begin with, yes, and then you added the other scenes because I yes. thought that you that you planned to make the movie and then you took also some of the scenes from the theatre play, but it was the other way around. It was the other way around, yeah. Okay, uh, I really was, you know, in the theatrical production, the story that I tell, which is based on a true story that happened in Toronto in the seventies, um, I tell it in a, in a very kind of uh, symbolic kind of uh, kind of abstract way and I thought it would be interesting to to shoot it in a more kind of real in in realistic scenes of it uh, in realistic settings and because it's such an interesting uh, uh, story it's about a, um, a a woman who who lived as a man in, in the se late 70s and uh, uh, when her, her, her girlfriend's father finds out that she's not a real, uh, a real man, um, he, he forbids his daughter from seeing uh, him. And so he goes, he gets a taxi, goes to the outskirts of town, cuts off the genitals of the taxi driver, crazy glues them to his vagina, and then goes to show the father that he has a real penis. That really happened? Yeah. It happened in Toronto in the late 70s. Wow. Yes. It's kind of like almost kind of reached a kind of urban legend status yeah. in Toronto, but then I, I kind of 
did try to do some research and found the actual story. I mean, um, I, there may be s some embellishments that have been added as it's turned into a kind of myth, you know, mm. but, uh, uh, and, I, and I embellished it as well, uh, you know, in the telling, but. Mm. Th this might be a stupid question, but how did the father react? Um, you know, I, I never, uh, I, I couldn't find, you know, the the outcome of it. I, okay. I assume, you know, the that he was punished for it and, and that, well, obviously, it, it's kind of a horrific um, yeah. um, sight to, to behold. Um, but in, in my telling of it, I, 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 you know, I, I kind of present the character, Pierrot, this, this uh, transsexual character as a kind of martyr, you know, as a kind of, uh, and uh, almost as a kind of saint, because he, he's, it's a character who's, who's uh, trapped in a, in a, in a body, mm -hmm. he's trapped in a society that 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 hates him. He's he, you know he's in a he was from a working class environment and he is uh, being discriminated against by this you know this his his girlfriend's rich father who's very conservative and so I mean there's all sorts of uh, kind of he's kind of a victim him, himself you know mm -hmm. so. Um, He's really acting out in a, in a very extreme way against all these, uh, uh, you know, all, all this uh, kind of um, hostility and 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 and, uh, and uh, you know, he he feels like he has no alternative but to transform himself mm. into um, into what society thinks is a real man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have also a lot of criticism of that kind in the movie, I would say, mm -hmm. against those norms in society, also about capitalism a lot, mm -hmm. especially against the father who is the symbol of capitalism in the movie. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that was something I found interesting that, that you put that in there as well, that you were not only telling the story, but at the same time you were, you were critical about the society. Yeah, uh, well, it's also kind of referencing, I mean, Pierre Schoenberg really had a, a, a real understanding and, and um, kind of um, uh, interest in, in Grand Guignol Theatre, which, which was a kind of um, uh, a, a theatre that was more for the masses, and it was a, a, a set in a, in a in kind of a working class milieu, and it, it was very um, melodramatic and violent, and there was always decapitations and amputations and ejaculations and 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 kind of brooding kind of um, characters. It's kind of the precursor of the modern slasher kind of genre, you know. Mm. So I, uh, I really, and Pierrot himself uh, is, all, is, is a, a very brooding, melancholy outsider. And it's a character, it's a male character that's always traditionally played by a woman, mm -hmm. which is how I got the idea in the first place to apply this. Oh, the okay, story so to it. that's where it came together, those, the story and the music. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So it really comes out of, um, uh, out of the, the, the figure of Pierrot is a very uh, intense loner outsider who, who loses his love and is a very brooding character, but uh, is always played by a, a, a woman. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so I thought it'd be perfect to, to apply to this hmm. story about the, uh, the this tra trans man. But in the movie, that also led to to a very harsh contrast, I would say, between the music, which is like high class classic. Well, it's not really classical, but it's sort of connected for me, at least, to an allied kind of music written from people who or written by people who have a lot of understanding of music and it's not really popular music in... Well, in its time it was. In its time it was. Yeah, more. I mean, you know, and he also uh, actually, Schoenberg actually introduced elements to his, this work, Pierre Lunaire, that were meant to be more uh, popular, uh, like certain waltzes of the time. And um, so, he, he, as I said, he, he really was interested in, in this Grand Guignol, which is a, a very popular kind of theatrical um, uh, form, and, and uh, 
it wasn't really uh, elitist at mm -hmm. that time. But is that the reason why you mixed it with sort of, well, club music in between to emphasize this popular aspect in Schoenberg's music? Yeah, I mean, um, our, you know, I had a, a musicologist who, who kind of like uh, 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 advised me and he, he really uh, drew parallels between these kinds of popular forms of music like Berlin techno and, and you know, his music at the time. I mean, his movie, music at that time was also kind of a, a revolution against classical music because it was atonal. Mm -hmm. He developed an atonal scale um, and um, it, it really was um, going against the, 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 the orthodoxy of, of music. Mm -hmm. Just like Piero is going against the orthodoxy of society. Or, and of gender. And of gender. Yeah. Yeah. I also like the psychological aspect, and I mean, you took it from the real story, but that she or the man without a penis is trying to get a penis and tries to get a real penis from someone else. I I, really, I had to think of Freud, to be honest, in that moment. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, for me, the story is so it's so kind of like um, mythic in a way because it it it's kind of almost like Shakespearean or or or, uh, or you like. A, a Greek myth or something because it, it's so um, and and it does kind of uh, evoke the castration complex the the Oed Oedipal complex I mean I'll, you penis know envy. penis envy etc um, but um, but on another level it's um, it's almost about the disposability of the penis I mean you know it, it, it's kind of a uh, it, it, it becomes just a, a kind of a, a symbol of power, but it's uh, there's something you know pathetic about it when it's when it's just uh, you know cut off and, and discarded or something you know. So it's it's um, uh, which is you know the, the I have this uh, guillotine which was also uh, uh, used a lot in Grand Guignol. But I use it as a glory hole guillotine where the penis gets cut cut off, mm -hmm. and this was kind of a, a um, reference to the, um, you know, the the difference between the the real phallus and the and and what it symbolizes and and uh, you know mm -hmm. how how it, it, it a penis is just a a penis sometimes <laughs> you know <laughs> you you can um, invest it with a lot a, a lot of uh, cultural baggage or, you know, uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, phallic symbolism, mm -hmm. but uh, when it's cut off, it's just so you try powerless, to get, you know. So you try to get rid of the phallus as the super sign, sort of? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, Pierrot is, is acting out against against the patriarchy as well so it, it, it's uh, it's it's more about his fantasy and his kind of transcendence of of his physical um, you know uh, of, of the body that he's trapped in hmm. you also mentioned the Shakespearean element or the Shakespearean level of the story and you also had quotes from Shakespeare in there, a bit different than in the original mm -hmm. plays. Um, so you adapted them to your, to your movie. And my cock, my cock, a kingdom for a cock. Exactly, and there's something fishy in the cock, state of Denmark. For, something fishy in the state of Denmark, yes. And uh, did, did you do that because of the Shakespearean elements in the story? Or how did you get to, I mean, you had yeah. a, lot of, a lot of literary references in the movie in general. Mm -hmm. So why, why did you do that? Well, like I said, I, I, I just think the, the, the story is, is um, you know, has such mythic potential. Uh, uh, it's a simple story, but it, 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 uh, it evokes uh, great um, themes, you know, mm. very tragic themes um, that anyone can, can kind of relate to, like, uh, like I said, about about powerlessness, about uh, about being trapped, about being about um, 
about un unrequited love, you know, uh, about um, uh, identity, you know, uh, um, mm. all sorts of themes that are classic. Mm. Another element that I found very, well, very visual in the movie and which was present all the time and sort of also like a protagonist was the moon. I mean, it's also in the name of Lunaire. Um, what, what, is, what role did the moon play for you in there? Well, I mean, it's interesting that, you know, this character, Pierrot, who started out as a male character and, um, you know, was a kind of a tragic clown who loses his wife and, you know, uh, in the 16th century, when it was adapted to, um, uh, you, you know, the late uh, 19th and early 20th century, um, it, it was transposed onto a woman, and then this, the moon, um, he was always considered a loony character, but, you know, the moon is quite often um, associated with, with the woman. With, with the female, you know, with kind of moodiness, with uh, the menstrual cycle, with, with phases of the moon, kind of, um, um, there's kind of a, a connection with, with femaleness as well, which makes it even more complicated because it's kind of what Piago is fighting against, you know. Mm. So he's again sort of fighting against his own nature, you know. Okay. Are you planning to do such a project again where you combine something like the music of Schoenberg with something modern like movies? Um, no, I have no plans to... to it was kind of a... a like I said, uh, Susanna and Premiel um, presented the project to me. It kind of... Um, I, I wouldn't have thought of it of doing it myself, you know. Uh, but that's what was interesting uh, f about it for me and challenging. Um, I mean, I have thought about uh, about uh, dabbling in opera, so maybe uh, if the right one comes along, uh, mm -hmm. I, would, I, would, I would think about it. All right. <laughs> Then we're looking forward to that, and thank you very much for the interview. Oh, you're welcome.